What's up, everybody? My name's Jeff. This is GIS Chops. Welcome to this series of where I provide a challenge with the data to go along with that challenge. And then a while later, I provide a walkthrough of how I usually work through that problem or that challenge. I started up a Discord server to help folks kind of interact with each other and me if they run into a problem or if they have questions or to post their results. So far, that's kind of like a middle school dance where everybody's just standing awkwardly around the edges. Nobody's posting anything. I'll give you a shout out if you post results to this challenge here. So grab a screenshot and post your results in the proper channel over there on Discord. There's a link to the Discord invite down in the description. I figured out that uh, the link I had before was only good for seven days. So I've changed that to not expire. So go ahead and hit that link down there. Join the Discord server and post something. I'll give you a shout out if you post your results. Now, if you don't have access to Pro, maybe you've graduated and the license you used as a student is gone. So here are two legal ways and don't do the illegal ways. Here are the legal ways to get access to an ArcGIS Pro license. Every now and then, Esri will run what's called a MOOC, M-O-O-C. That stands for Massive Open Online Course. There's one running right now, and this is, this is April of 2025. There's one running right now, so you can register for that. I'll put a link in the description for that registration, and they give you access to ArcGIS Pro while you go through the course. I think the course lasts six weeks, and then they give you another buffer time to finish up whatever assignments they have. So you can get access that way, which is great. I mean, I think that's one of the coolest things about Esri is they'll say, hey, here, use our software and here's some free training. Or this way, which is not free, but very reasonably priced, a personal license for ArcGIS Pro. You can't use that for for-profit stuff. You can only use it for your own uh, development and your own enjoyment. That's, I think, a hundred bucks a year. Also put a link to ArcGIS Pro personal license down in the description. Your challenge is to georeference two subdivision plats. A subdivision plat is when somebody has a piece of property and they're going to subdivide it into lots and streets and then sell those lots and streets and it's called a subdivision plat. It's either a surveyor draws it up or a drafter under the direction of a surveyor draws it up and then it gets recorded it's essentially saying I'm breaking up this bigger piece of property into smaller pieces of property to sell. And so here's an example of it, of one. This one's called Upper Day Spring Subdivision Phase 1. And your job is to georeference these two subdivision plats. So I have uploaded this project as a package. It contains the upper day spring subdivision boundaries, the two phases, and then the two images that you need to geo-reference. I geo-reference things all the time, if not daily. Every other day I geo-reference something. So geo-referencing is a great skill to have. So what geo-referencing is, you take an image or a digital file like a CAD drawing, and then you give it real-world coordinates. You're taking a point on the image and giving it the real-world coordinates using the subdivision boundary. So your assignment is to geo-reference these two subdivision plats. Don't call it a plot. I called them plots when I first started, and I was very quickly corrected to say plat instead of plot. Plots are in cemeteries. So I'm going to go into grandpa mode here. Back in my day! And say back when I was in school, they didn't teach this as a valid method to get data from a printed map or a paper map into GIS because the technology was not quite up to par. I don't know what it was, if it was the way the image was pulled in or the scanning device, if it scanned like like a printer head, I don't know. So we had these big digitizing boards with a puck on it and and you had to tape it up there and put in control points and then digitize with the puck. It, it was a whole thing and very slow and tedious. So be grateful that scanning technology allows us to bring this data in. I don't usually heads up digitize from these plat maps. I just use them as a reference. If you've seen any of my parcel fabric videos, that's what I do with them. I just put them up there to read off of them to get bearings and distances and to make sure that 
I'm putting the subdivision incorrectly. So I'm a believer in the philosophy of learn by doing. I mean, I, f I feel like I internalize things more when I have to go find the solution or figure out how to do something. That's why I've done these videos in this format. I give you the challenge and then the walkthrough later. So don't just wait for the walkthrough. Go give this a shot and try to geo-reference these. If you need help, I have a video of me geo-referencing a subdivision plat. I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. I plan on future challenges building on this one, so look for these two subdivisions in the future. There's your challenge, so go get to work. If you get stuck, here's that video of me geo-referencing something. And then here's the playlist for this series with other challenges. And then up here is the walkthrough. And if it's not there yet, it's because I haven't made it yet. But you really should try to do the work without watching the walkthrough. We'll see you next time. Good luck.